Rivets are typically used to fasten sheet metal. They're also great in salads, but today we're repurposing one for our igniter. Secure the pop rivet in a vise with the nail end facing up. Gently tap the nail out using a hammer. You can discard the nail afterward. Use a 532nd inch drill bit. Drill a shallow cup about 3 of an inch deep. This will be your ignition cup. Next, use a 1 8 inch drill bit to drill through the entire length of the rivet body, creating a channel for the fuse. Take a few inches of high quality 3mm cannon fuse. I recommend one with the nitrocellulose coating. It's shiny and rigid on the outside. Cut one end of the fuse diagonally, parallel to the sheath strands. This maximizes the powder core surface area for better ignition. Slide the fuse through the rivet from the bottom until about half of the diagonal cut sits at the base of the 532nd inch cup you drilled earlier. In other words, here on this picture. Secure the fuse in place with a small amount of thick CA glue. Out here looking as thick as cheese. It's giving deep dish. Looking like a deep dish. On the base. Be careful, if the fuse lacks a nitrocellulose coating, avoid letting the glue seep into the powder core, as it could prevent ignition. Use an activator to speed this up. Use just enough glue to hold the fuse snugly, ensuring the assembly fits into the fuse head later. Fill the ignition cup with your ignition composition. In this video, I'll guide you through everything you need to know to complete this project on your own. However, if you'd rather skip the hard shit, I'm offering a new kit on my website that includes everything you need except the fuse. The kit contains two ready-to-load fuse heads with spoons and striker assemblies, fully drilled and tapped with 4mm threading for the inset screw, which I'll show you shortly. It also includes enough ignition composition, oxidizer, striker composition, and nitrocellulose lacquer to make 50 plus igniters, and it includes 20 reloadable rivets to get you started. The only additional item you'll need to source is the fuse, and the only component you'll need to prepare are the igniters. Click on this magical box right here. Ha! <laughs> If you're wondering where to get this, I offer kits on my website that include all the materials you need for this project and others like it. Gently press the composition into the cup with your fingers to pack it lightly. Add a single drop of nitrocellulose lacquer to the mix and let it soak in. Allow it to air dry or speed things up with a heat gun. Finally, mix a small amount of striker composition with two drops of nitrocellulose lacquer. Quickly brush a thin layer over the top of the ignition cup. Work fast, this dries in seconds. Make sure all your tools are ready before you start this step. That's it for the igniter. Let's move on to modifying the fuse head. To give you some context, let's look at a cross section of an M228 fuse head. The primer pocket is designed to hold a small pistol primer, which ignites a sort of catch basin connected to a channel for delay composition. In its original military use, likely for training devices like flashbangs, this channel might have contained a compressed delay mixture such as barium chromate and boron. Important note, we are not replicating that gasless delay composition. Doing so could be dangerous and illegal. It is also used in high explosive devices. Instead, we're creating a safe igniter for smoke grenades using fireworks grade fuse, strictly for personal, non-commercial use. This setup is open, spark heavy, and not suitable for confined or explosive applications. Here's how to modify the fuse head. Start with a 1 8 inch drill bit. From the bottom of the fuse head, which is the delay end, drill upwards to clear out any original materials. Stop when you feel resistance from the percussive cap. Remove the drill bit and tap the fuse head gently to dislodge debris. Repeat the process with a 532nd inch drill bit to widen the channel slightly, making room for the 3mm fuse. Now, from the top of the fuse head, drill downward with a 316th inch bit 
to match the rivet's diameter. Your depth should be the length of the rivet body. Since this might be a tight fit, gently rock the bit in small circles to ream the hole slightly. Don't overdo it, you want the rivet to fit snugly at the bottom even if the top is a bit looser. The aluminum rivet and magnesium fuse head are both malleable, so they'll conform when pressed together. Next, we should drill and tap a hole for an inset screw. This is used to secure the cannon fuse and prevent the igniter from riding up when the fuse head is screwed into the grenade canister. I include a 4mm inset screw and its hex key with my kits. However, it is not the end of the world if you skip this step and just use thick CA glue or tape to secure the cannon fuse to the bottom of the delay tube. For an M201A1 fuse head, first drill out the entire length of the time delay, fill it with JB Weld steel stick epoxy putty, then obviously allow it to cure and proceed with all the previous steps. Huzzah! <laughs> I love those. I love that one. Okay, goodbye. I love you. <laughs>